I'm not sure if anybody's worked in small businesses or has purchased from a small local store in their town. But personally, I've grown up in small businesses since the age of seven. When I was 18, I chose to, to leave and pursue a career in technology, of which I spent a decade touring the African continent, implementing tier one solutions and more. But when I finally came home, I realized that nothing had changed for my family stores 10 years later. And this is what spun the idea and the birth of Little Fish, where our intention is to connect small businesses to the world around them. So you gave us a challenge. The challenge was to develop a cost-effective and sustainable ecosystem. It must be end-to-end, -end, it must eliminate cash, and it must be inclusive. We believe Little Fish is that platform. Not only do we eliminate cash through payment agnostic mechanisms, we're scalable and flexible because we're easy to use and you can run our platform in minutes as a seller. From 18 to 88, anyone can use Little Fish. It's just that easy. We believe we enhance your value chain by adding value added services down and upstream. We have sight of the entire product flow. We believe that we can enable the PMI network strategy, if anything, assist it when it comes to connecting consumers, retailers, and wholesalers. But you might say, what is Little Fish? Little Fish to us is a product focused on the SMME. What it is, it's an easy to use platform that connects small businesses to their community, their suppliers, financial service providers, and more. We work on four key principles, sell anywhere, manage everywhere, promote anytime, and accept any form of payment. The philosophies around this also now falls into what makes Little Fish special. Little Fish is a super app with some super abilities. The first one is our community rewards program, where not only do we reward a community member for how well they support small businesses, our intention is to reward the entire community for how well they support local. For example, if the community can get to 10,000 points, we'll repaint the school, we'll retar the tarmac, we'll do something, something for good. We are an end-to-end -end ecosystem from sign up to delivery or collection, Little Fish is there along the way. We're the only platform that's socially and geographically connected. We fundamentally believe that everything works based on where you are and who you know. Simple statement, keep it local, keep it social. We are an open ecosystem and our ecosystem is fundamentally based on we are not an island. We have to connect with financial service providers. We have to connect with savings providers. We have to give communities more value every single day. But you might say, what is community e-commerce and why would we try and do this? We believe that by bringing a community digitally together is that we will be able to embrace technology and change the world around us. But what's different in a community? One, once again, we can reward communities for how well they support businesses. We can see product flow from wholesaler down to consumer. We can leverage the trust that an SME has down to the consumer to change their behaviors, right? We can potentially create more jobs and we can concentrate wealth creation. Now, what does Little Fish look like? What is our platform? Little Fish has been designed with the user in mind. Some of our features include community rewards, connecting based on geo positioning, in, in store to online transfers, we're payment agnostic, we're multilingual. We've got a range of products and offerings for an SME. Not only do we have ca uh, campaign management, retail point of sale, we truly believe we are the end to end platform for an SME out there today. But more importantly, we also connect the wholesalers and provide the same set of functionality up and downstream, which we'll demonstrate to you in a second. Then our Little Fish platform has a little bit of a social twist. We believe that by combining e-commerce with dedicated retail social media, it should change the game. Firstly, support local and be rewarded. Follow your favorite stores. Check out the deals feed that they've got for you today. Look at content with the intention to elicit or drive sales. No clutter, no mix up, no trolls. And again, it's not much different to what you already know. So it feels familiar. Brandon, give me one second. We're trying to fix it. Your screen sharing is off. We cannot fix it from our end. I'm just stopping right now. Um, can you try to load it up again from your side? No problem. No problem. Marina, we can see it here though. You can see it? Okay, yeah. fantastic. I got a message from Shreya that, you know, some people were not able to see it. Oh, okay. That, that, that was probably a bit earlier, but sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so we were trying to fix it in the back end, but uh, I think it was an issue. If you could just stop sharing and reshare, it is not an issue for everybody, it's just an issue for some of the locations. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. I, I stopped the time, Brandon, so no worries. No problem, that helps me. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Shreya, you can see again. Is it all good? Fantastic. Okay, very good. Okay. All right, so tell me when we can begin yes. again. We can resume. We can resume. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. So we say it's not much different to what you already know, but going cashless and going digital is a journey. We learned this by interviewing hundreds of SMEs in South Africa and Tanzania and our family. The first step is converting what's run in store in the operations to something digital that can accept cashless. So not only do we take your business online to consumers and connect your community, but we give you the tools to run the operations in your small business. It's a journey and we're with you along the way. What we wanted to do is just give you a very quick tour inside of the Little Fish app. Now, this app is live, it's currently in public beta. So, simple concepts. Follow your favorite stores, manage your stores if you have a business account. Be rewarded based on how well you support small businesses, claim a couple of coupons or vouchers based on what it is that you have over there. Then go through this and say, what am I looking for? What are my categories? Where are the stores nearby? Go to the retail feed and look what people have to offer. Again, retail media. Check my preferences. I can go and say it's multilingual and change this to Swahili and other languages that may be required. It simply plugs in. We give the stores an amazing storefront to sell any type of product that they would like. Buy, check out, process, purchase, search, filter, group, and the same applies for wholesalers. Run your checkout process where required. We do the positioning, we do the payments, we do everything that you would potentially need. Then on top of this, if you are a store owner, can you do the same thing and buy from wholesalers near you? Yes, you can. So we take the same functionality and shift it one layer up. So yeah, as a wholesaler called Tanaka Wholesale. Tanaka Wholesale sells chips, sweets, beverages, chocolates. I'm gonna follow Tanaka Wholesale. I'm gonna buy jelly tots and a pack of walkers and a couple of other things. And I'm gonna complete this order now as the SME. And that will allow me to flow all the way through. The payment options plug straight into our POS. And uh, further to that, what ends up happening is if I show you in the order section, we give an entire management cycle of all the orders. Sorry, I just want to go and show you the, the clean view. So here's an order that's been completed. And well, we can actually, run through I'm that. Sorry, sorry, Brandon, I have to stop you here. We'll move over to Q&A, but maybe one of the the first question from the judges is to, to finish no your, your pitch. Yes. Must I, must I finish the pitch? Yes, finish you finish the pitch. Absolutely. So we can shoot away with, with questions. Okay. No Masad, problem. No problem. Benjamin, who wants to go first? Okay. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, go ahead. Thanks, uh, Brendan. Uh, quick, quick question. I mean, I know we didn't go through the entire uh, deck, but uh, it, it, does appear to be a, a kind of a marketplace uh, offering, uh, and how different is it to you know what already exists in many many uh, markets around the world? Yeah. All right. So what what's different about our marketplace is that we focus on bringing the store to the forefront. That's the first thing. We use geo positioning to to basically grab the consumers also around the store to create this inclusive interaction. We also take an element of social media and use targeted retail media, which will allow for communication, broadcasts and posts. Further to that, we one of the only platforms that allows for the adoption of consumer rewards based on how well you support a collective of stores around you. Um, really, our main difference is that we are focused on hyper-local regions or radiuses. And we give all the sets of tools that the, the common point of sales or e-commerce channels are out there so you don't miss out on anything. Okay, uh, question from me. So thanks for the presentation. Um, you're talking about these community rewards, right? How do you prioritize the needs and rewards you know, how is it funded? Where is it is so is paid for by fees from the marketplace? You know, what's what's the mechanism that happens here? You said paint to school, for example. Um, 
where do these rewards come from? Can you select them? Or is it random? I, I would love to know more about it. So, so the concept there is that we first set up targets for an individual uh, to build an individual scorecard. So that would basically be invite a store, make a purchase without cash or make a purchase with cash or follow a store and these build up an individual's member scorecard. That individual member can then go along and pass his or her score into the community pool's worth of scores. So it's basically saying I'm choosing to give uh, 5,000 points to the community pool. Then in the community pool, what we want to accomplish there is to basically say, we don't know what you need. Please present it to us. Uh, we'll pick that up. So make a request. We evaluate the cost of that. And then we would go along and give a point allocation to say we need to get to say 500,000 points to repaint the school in that instance. And the members that have pledged would then go out once the goal is reached and somebody would have to invoke we would like to use the 500,000 points to paint the school and then majority rules. So of those that vote within a window, then that would be allocated. And in terms of the funding, there would need to be a subsidy that we would pay for ourselves um, to, to fund that, especially in the beginning while we are chasing market traction. Uh, the second portion of it would be from subscription and uh, our transactional fees that run through the system. Okay, interesting. Do you think that sounds quite complicated? It does to an extent on the full explanation, but the devil is in the user experience, mm -hmm. which in turn would be quite simple, really. I have it on my phone and there's a little prompt that says, support your community and paint the school. As an example, I tap that and takes me through to pledging my, my share. And as soon as it hits, everybody gets ding, 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 uh, start painting the school and I say, yes, I'm ready to paint the school. The, the tech behind it becomes slightly more complicated, but the experience itself uh, should be a simple one. I was just, um, yeah, wondering, Brandon, you probably had a chart that was talking about the team. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yes, so our team itself is that we were a quite seasoned team uh, with two of our founders uh, being in the market for a very long time and a seasoned youngster. So my co-founder, David Kawa, founded the first credit bureau in Tanzania and uh, was one of the top businessmen uh, for East Africa. My other co-founder, Steve Prouse, uh, was the founder of Cyber Systems. He's actually my ex-boss. And we grew Cyber Systems to about 100 banks across uh, Africa and 20 different territories. And myself, I've implemented and built solutions across 20 countries from central bank clearing switches through to branch paperless platforms, mobile processing, and many other things from design all the way through. Um, and our team behind it is we believe that great people do great things. And this is the team sitting behind the Little Fish stream. The three founders, Linesh Naidu, our lead analyst, Lucky, who heads up cybersecurity and governance, Onalena, our lead developer, who really took part and nailed it in this, uh, this hackathon. Uh, Tsepo, one of our analysts, Nabil and Vanessa. So great team, great people, and we really believe in what we're doing. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, we're, we're nearly at the end of the Q&A and unless there is one uh, really pressing question from Prasad or from Benjamin. Yeah, Karina, thanks. Uh, Brendan, again, I think uh, you probably had it in your deck but didn't get time to cover it. Could you, could you just you know, explain in very simple terms, how does the financial kind of end-to-end -end piece work? Uh, because that's, that's something that is very you know, kind of dear to our hearts and we just want to get that absolutely nutted out, yeah? All right, so the financial aspect, when you refer to the uh, cashless payments that would yeah. run through. Yeah. So, for, so what we do is that we're payment agnostic. So we'll take a region and we'll segment the integration. So in South Africa, we've got guys like Zappa, Snapscan, and so forth, which gives QR code uh, facilities, NFC, tap to pay. So we aggregate them into an integration port of which we are the settlement party in between. So you simply sign up, you give us your banking information or your card or your mobile wallet, the customers can pay with that facility. And then within a settlement window, we pay that back to the SME saying that this went through because we have to secure value to ensure that the goods are delivered in good condition and the transaction is followed through end to end. So I hope that gives the explanation. Well, we do have to stop here though. Um, Prasad, are you okay? Did that give you enough background? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's fine. Um, Corina, sorry, just, just one more question. Uh, in terms of your current uh, 
POC and as well as revenue streams in uh, assuming in, in Africa, uh, what's, what's your plans for kind of scaling up and or other parts of the world, if any? So our first market that we looked at was Tanzania, where we partnered with uh, the largest bank in the country there. We've had to pause with COVID. But our real thing is to say we need to do a public beta in two territories, which was South Africa and Tanzania. And thereafter, we'll push to scale in other markets because the way our platform works is that the configuration is ring-fenced by region. It's also multilingual and uh, it's also customizable based on parameters that will allow us to create custom experiences in different regions. So we haven't found the replacement region for Tanzania at the moment, but ideally it would be a market very similar to South Africa, which I've learned recently, like the Philippines uh, is quite, quite similar uh, in terms of geographic nature and people in general and how the market works, but we haven't been there. So that would be a market for us to potentially explore Thank and learn. You. Thank you very much, Brandon. I'm really sorry. I have to stop.